Hi, I'm Thomas Hicks, Chairman of the United States Election Assistance Commission, or EAC. This video is part of a series of webinars that will assist the state and local election officials who complete the 2022 Election Administration and Voting Survey, or EVES. This is an important project that collects data on election policy and election administration from nearly 6,500 jurisdictions across the United States, five territories, in the District of Columbia. EVES is a very important survey that helps shed light on how elections are administered and how Americans participate in elections. This webinar is for election officials who are new to leading EVES for their state or territory. It offers practical advice on the resources that are available to assist you in completing the survey. In addition, the EAC and our implementing partner, Forest Marsh Group, are ready to assist you with any questions you may have as you prepare your data submissions. Thank you for watching and working to complete the 2022 EVES. Hi, I'm Lindsay Nielsen, a senior researcher at Forest Marsh and one of the members of the team that collects EVES data. EVES is the federal government's efforts to understand how federal general elections are administered in counties, municipalities, and other election jurisdictions across the country. It's an important survey that helps us better understand how elections are conducted and how they can be improved. For the 2022 EVES, nearly half of states and territories will have an EVES point of contact, or POC, who's new to the project. We know EVES is a huge project and can be intimidating, so this video is intended to help new POCs understand the resources that are available to assist them, what they should look out for as they're completing the survey, and some practical advice to help them provide high quality, accurate data to the Election Assistance Commission. To start off, I'll highlight some of the resources and project documentation that the EVES project team has made available. This isn't a comprehensive list, but I'll call out some of the items that can help new points of contact orient themselves to the projects. First, you should know that the EVES portal, which is located at eavsportal.com, is your one-stop shop for everything related to EVES. The tabs on that website you'll use most often are the Resources tab, which has training materials that include videos, newsletters, a user guide to help you understand how to use the data collection templates, and an Excel crosswalk to help you understand how the EVES questions have changed since 2020. You'll also use the State Files tab a lot, which you can access by clicking Login on the EVES portal homepage. Once you log in, you'll find access to your EVES data submissions from 2016 to 2020 and the data collection templates that you'll use to collect and submit your EVES data. You can also upload files or data submissions for the EVES project team to review at this web page. Each state POC has had an account created for them on the EVES portal. If you need help resetting your password for the portal, click on the Forgot Password link on the login page. If you're still having trouble logging in, contact the EVES Help Desk. Second, before you begin working on the 2022 EVES, I highly recommend you read a guide to the Election Administration and Voting Survey, which you'll find on the Resources tab of the EVES portal. This is a policy guide that outlines the EVES process from start to finish. We wrote this document with new points of contact in mind to help you understand why the EAC collects EVES data, what the agency does with the data, and what your responsibilities are as a POC to coordinate the data collection for your state or territory. It's a great starting point for putting all the other EASE information into context. The last resource I want to highlight for you is our Technical Assistance Help Desk. This help desk is staffed by trained specialists who can assist you with any part of the EASE project, whether it's a lost password, technical issues with the data collection templates, whether you need clarity on the survey questions or instructions, or anything else. The most common way to contact the help desk is through email, eavs at forestmarshgroup.com, or you can call the phone number listed on the state files page of the EAST portal. We're committed to providing you with prompt support through the help desk, and all inquiries we receive will be answered within one business day, and often much sooner than that. We're now gonna hear from Trina Velez, who completed the EAST for the first time in 2020 for North Carolina, and will be doing so again in 2022. 
she'll provide some advice for those who are new POCs in 2022 to be successful in completing EAS for their state or territory. My name is Trina Velez. I am Deputy Director for Election Administration at the North Carolina State Board of Elections. Um, my experience with EAS is that um, I began my job at the North Carolina State Board of Elections in November of 2019, um, right before the 2020 elections. Um, and not too long after the chaos began, what um, brought into um, the EVE survey being part of my responsibility. Um, I served as a director of elections in a large county in North Carolina for 25 years. So I had been experienced with um, that time period when counties actually filled in a lot of that data and, and sent it on. You know, I think one of the biggest challenges for the survey is that we all think of it in the elections world as post-election, right? And, and so it's when we are in the middle of election season, it's very easy to say, oh, well, we can we can do that after the election. You know, we can we can focus on that later. So it, it's really um making sure that we all pay attention to the preparatory steps um, and reaching out and making sure that we're all doing that at the agency. And, and that that's challenging when everyone, I, I was in the administrative end, making sure that everyone um, answered the questions correctly and that we were ready to answer and, and gather all the data. Um, but just making sure that everyone knew what was coming um, and didn't wait till the last minute. And especially in 2020, that was definitely challenging. Another challenge was, um, so getting on people's schedule and making sure that it was in front of everyone. Um, the other challenge was making sure that, you know, the important people that needed to review um, different sections, um, that you got that information to them in a timely manner so that they would have time to review. Uh, of course, legal is always a part of anything that goes out of our agency. Um, and at that time, of course, in 2020, they were um, inundated with lots of other uh, important projects, lawsuits, challenges, protests, et cetera. So, um, you know, that's the challenge. And also, you know, getting everybody together to make sure that the interpretations of the different questions are agreed upon um, can also be challenging. I will say that um, everyone involved with the ease process was very responsive and helpful along the way. So I would encourage others to take advantage of that. Um, I remember certainly uh, being late on a couple of occasions because of some interpretation issues. Um, and uh, the whole team was very responsive. I definitely learned that um, going ahead and reading everything through the newsletter, the guide, the survey itself as soon as possible is to your advantage um, so that you can begin to um, know what, what is coming down the pipe. Um, you know, your best resources are your fellow staff members because they're the ones that um, is, they're going to have to help gather that data um, and help answer those questions um, that are specific to your state or your agency. So what I would do differently um, this time is, number one, make sure that the agency staff that need to be added as a point of contact are added. Um, and follow up with those to make sure that individuals that are going to be participating in gathering information are also brought into the conversation. Um, I'm going to be scheduling regularly scheduled meetings with key members of the agency to review by section, um, a pre preview, if you will that, okay, this is what we are going to be asked to collect. And so is are there any questions that we need to be asking ourselves now so that we're able to collect that data late, later? Um, I plan on doing that by section and, and gathering those key staff members. 
um, you know, there are new, there's new software that we have, you know, we have Omni ballot, we have a ballot portal now. So we want to make sure that there are um, ways to gather the data that we need to, to gather. Um, and then I will be sending out reminders um, to those key individuals, especially any other point of contact uh, individuals um, along the way to make sure that they have, you know, did, did you get the newsletter? What do you think? I just kind of keep in contact with them um, and provide scheduled reminders of what your dates are, as well as just making sure that they are getting the information. And so the main thing with that is getting on everybody's schedule now before things get crazy so that it is already blocked off on their calendar. Yeah, as a new point of contact, I think I think the first thing I would recommend to those individuals is that they begin by reading the newsletters and the Ease Project Guide. Take the time to sit down and read through all of it and go ahead and mark your own calendar and, and give yourself your own um, reminders along the way um, because it, it is very easy in a busy election season to when we are trying our best just to keep up with election season to, to just put that off. And, and so that that is my um, most meaningful piece of advice, I think, is, is to don't put it aside, make it part of your fabric of election season so that um, when it is time to complete that survey, then all of your ducks are in a row and um, you can do that with the least amount of angst possible. Thank you so much, Katrina, for sharing your experiences and advice. While each state and territory has a different process for completing these, I want to close with some advice that's broadly applicable to all new POCs. First, start as early as you can. General election years are busy for everyone, but it's important not to put off your ease preparations. Start early by reading through all the survey questions and instructions and identifying topics or questions where you'll need to consult with other resources to complete your submission. Your EVE submissions from previous years are available to you on the EVE portal so you can see what your responses have been in the past. Next, most EVE submissions truly take a village to prepare. You'll likely need assistance from others as you complete EVEs, such as database administrators, IT staff, data vendors, local officials, legal staff, and others. There may be other individuals who you'll want to review your data before you submit it to the EAC. If this is the case, assemble your team early and let them know what their tasks will be and when their work will be needed. This will help everyone stay on track with the project. One aspect of your EAC project plan should be deciding which data collection templates you'll use. For states that can provide most or all data from state databases, you'll rely solely on the Excel templates. For states that need to collect data directly from jurisdictions, the online template is a solution you should consider. Consult the EAS Data Template User Guide on the EAS portal for more information on how each template works. You may want to set your own internal deadlines to help keep you on track. For instance, since your draft data is due on February 1st, set the deadline for completing that submission a week ahead of time to allow you to review and make any corrections that are needed. In addition, you may find it helpful to meet regularly throughout the data collection period to ensure you stay on track to submit your data in a timely manner. Feel free to share the resources available on the EAST portal with any members of your EAST team, including newsletters, videos, and the template user guide. It's also important to understand how the two surveys that are part of this project, the policy survey and EVE, integrate with each other. The policy survey is collected before the election and collects information on your state's laws policies. We use this information to better understand the EVE data you'll submit. For instance, when you download your EVE templates, you'll see that some of the EVE items have been filled as does not apply based on your policy survey responses. There will also be data validations within your EAST templates that will highlight if your EAST responses conflict with the policy survey of data we received from you. 
If you need to update anything in your policy survey submission, reach out to our help desk. Next, e each EVE's question has a comment space available. Please use these comments to provide context to your data. This information will be published with the data in 2023 and may be printed in the EVE's report as well. Since this information will be public, ensure that your comments can be easily understood by data users who aren't familiar with your state's election practices. Don't include any sensitive or personally identifiable information and define any acronyms you include in your comments. Lastly, contact the EVE's help desk with any questions you have throughout the project. Our team can help you create a plan for completing your EVE's data, point you to helpful resources, and answer your technical assistance questions. We're committed to providing the highest level of support we can, and we want to hear of any challenges you're experiencing so we can work with you to solve them. Thank you for watching this webinar. Those of us at the EVE's team are excited to work with you on this important data collection project. As a reminder, you can find additional webinars and other information and resources about EVE's at the EVE's portal. We are also ready and eager to answer any technical questions you have about the 2022 EVE's. You can contact the project team at eavs at forsmarshgroup.com.